Our next speaker is Preeti Kaur, who is VP of Engineering at Carta, an equity management platform. Uh, prior to Carta, Preeti held engineering leadership roles at companies such as Adobe, Rakuten, and Climate Core. Uh, she's going to talk about perspectives on how to construct a sound and dynamic technical strategy, uh, including first-hand accounts from her own hypergrowth journey at Carta. Over to you, Preeti. Why is it up there? And I believe we need a clicker, which yes. is right over there. Thank you. All right. How awesome is this in person? I am so excited. Uh, in real life, not a Zoom. <laughs> All right, so I keep looking there, I should look here. Um, so thank you for the introduction. Um, I will in the next 20 minutes try to walk you all through a framework that I am a big fan of for dealing with the tech debt, as we all like to refer to it. Um, and this is something we've done in Carta. I don't like abstract uh, talk. We'll actually, I'll give you a real example of what we did at Carta and how, what we learned and failed and succeeded, how all that went through. So the, first of all, <laughs> let's acknowledge how hard we all work. All engineering leaders in this room, um, let's applaud each other <laughs> for everything that we do. And I mean scaling issues, delighting customers, release process. Can you also worry about developer productivity? Hey, um, did you think about the upsell flow? How about tech convergence? How about ARR growth? You know what? All of that. And it's a lot. I ran out of time. I could have added 50 more. And I know we all deal with it, so it's a lot of hard work to be an eng leader at any level at any company. So great work. <laughs> so let's get back to the talk. So the three things, I want to make sure we're all on the same page for the next 20 minutes um, so this talk will make sense. One is, what do I mean when I say consistency, the three essential elements? Well, consistency is no matter which part of your product, a customer, a stakeholder, internal, external, is coming in from, if they are asking for that one request, they should get, get that same outcome. No matter where, they come in from a report generation, they come in from an in-app, or a big picture in a small number, it should be the same outcome. Then they will have trust. Next is accuracy. I hear this often, yeah, no, no, this is less accurate, that's more accurate. There is no such thing. Accurate is accurate, or it's not. So that, hopefully, we have under control. We are giving accurate information at all times. And lastly, performance. And there's major, bigger experts than me on this topic, but what I do know is it's not the same for every workflow, for every action, for every request. So you have to have a definition of what an optimal performance looks like with your business counterpart, their expertise, and your customers at all times as well. So this is what you will get. SLOs, SLAs, many ways to describe this, but the point being, expectations are aligned. So this is, the, those three things will come into picture as we talk through the strategy, so bear with me. Um, this is, in my opinion, the engineering story of pretty much any hypergrowth startup that I have friends at, I have been at myself, or I have heard talks about. So you launch it, you were one of the lucky ones, yay, ARR, you were right, there was a need for this product. You hit the ground running, money's coming in, yay. Okay, now what? So we go, we raise more money so we can build out that engineering team. We can go hire that L6 engineer from you know, this, one of those companies and the front end architect and the data scientist and all those unique roles and everything, so great. Now you've gone in, your company's bigger, it's no more those 10 people who knew everything about everything. Now you maybe have a business unit, you maybe have a core functional model, you could do any kind of org design, which I'm sure there's multiple ways of doing it, but at the end you have to put people in pockets, they're called teams sometimes. Now there are more engineers, many more. And they're all trying to achieve what their product manager told them to deliver in so much time, and all they're bothered about is the merge conflicts. That's done, push to master, desks are passing, I'm done. And that's where the chaos starts because most of the time there is a monolith in the background. Now the architecture decisions are not making sense. Um, 
not because they were not good at that point in time, but they don't evolve without doing anything. It takes effort because now the product direction may have changed, your vision's changed, evolve, products evolve, so much, so much can happen. And so, you know, this will not be something that's new. It happens in every company. Now releases are harder, right? There's gnarly regressions. This hand is not talking to this hand. Oh, but I dropped a column in this table. How come the whole site crashed? Well, yeah, I did a migration. I don't understand. So that's a story we all hear, hopefully not on a daily basis, but often. Um, oh my God, that one refactoring legacy flow no one wants to touch. But that engineer left the company. The tribal knowledge is gone. I don't want to touch it. I don't know what. So that's like the hot potato situation that happens as well. Data integrity issues. Things that didn't matter, we never collected that information about, a now that's a required field. So your data integrity issues, missing, missing data, or you know, we, a customer's loud and wants something, you write a bespoke flow to add some data, and then they call back and, um, oh, there's no modification flow for this. So an engineering service request gets executed, and now you have data integrity issues. Those things happen, and my favorite, Lack of standardized definitions. In CARDA, fully diluted by share class, fully diluted by stakeholder. What is fully diluted? What is available shares? When are they available? At what do you want a point in time? Do you want overall? There's no, what is an active user? All these different definitions can really quickly fall out of place when there is no one place or one source of truth, and that causes chaos. And the last thing I'll say here is, I'm sure if there was product in there, they'll be rolling their eyes. Recently, someone asked me, can you add this recapture flow for I'm not a robot? How long would that take? And the way that whole page works, I think the answer should have been, oh, it's a few hours. No, we'll, we'll queue it up for the next sprint. We'll see, we'll do some discovery, we'll let you know. And that's kind of how these things start going when it is a monolith that's eggshells now. Now, there are many reasons why this happens. I'm 100% sure the 10 engineers, OGs, didn't wake up and go, hey, let's make not so smart decisions today and mess with the future employees. That's never the reason. We all know the reasons, I'm not gonna get into that. But that was the Carta story at some point in time. And now I'll come to how we tried and um, you know, fix it, whatever fixing it really means. So we came up with a technical strategy. Um, now, it's a different company from where we started. But this strategy isn't just based on pay off the tech debt for the sake of paying off the tech debt. I have personally been in companies where we paused everything. We paid off the tech debt. We basically rewrote the software and then started again. But then we ran out of money. So this is like for reals an example I have lived in, there's a mic here, I have lived through that um, I don't want to repeat again. So. It has to generate business leverage. You should be able to get your business partner excited about the work you are doing. One that will converge into that one company goal, usually money related, logos related, churn related. And we'll propel that for, uh, further and further. And all the problems we said. So it's a very tall order. Um, some might say impossible, but you gotta try somewhere. So here's the technical strategy that I want to work through with you all on Carta that we tried. So for that, you have to understand a little bit about Carta's problem. So we are a cap table management country, uh, country company. Cap tables are gnarly, very difficult to manage, and that's why Carta makes all the money that we make. Um, they have to be, they're temporal, they have to be correct, at, and you all understand this, they have to be correct at a point in time, they have to be accurate, they have to be audit defensible. You can't just do something because you felt like it. There has to be a proper SEC reason for it. Um, and also, they should be accessible because we all need to see what's happening in our company's cap table. And in the background, little secret, Carta has a monolith. And <laughs> we need to figure out all of this. So it was a very hard problem to solve. So we, it, it's a big problem. We started with a small problem space, which is there are no standard definitions. This I touched on a few minutes ago. So across the board, 
aggregate entities is what makes sense to an end user. If any of you uses Carta, you know, there is, if you ask a question, how we represent it would not make any sense, obviously. So the aggregation of those core entities is where Carta's business sits. Now, that said, there are very few standard ways to come up with these aggregates because no one wanted to wait for each other to standardize the flow. If you are an investor side of the product, they wrote their own algorithm to tell the investor how the cap their portfolio companies are doing. Employee side, Carta, uh, company admin side, all in good intention. There's a concept in Carta called do two is uh, greater than zero, which means if no one's doing it, it's okay, go do it. It's a feature, it's not a bug. But eventually it catches up with you, and that's where there are many solutions to the same problem, and they will never be consistent because they don't have standard definitions. Or there is missing and incorrect data. And in the last 10 years or so, companies have stayed private much longer, and they get bigger and bigger. And when that happens, you have international employees, which is, we all know, international, all sets of rules, new rules, different rules. It becomes a big problem. Um, multiple stock option plans over the years. And each company will run complicated transactions. You want to offer liquidity to your com uh, employees, tender offers. You want to go one stock now is 10. 10 is now one. All those different transactions complicate a cap table, but we have to pull it all together. And those kinds of transactions make this problem very hard, the consistency problem. Level of pain was very high. I physically felt it on a daily basis. So what did we do? Well, first we took this big, gigantic problem and we broke it into categories. Any guesses on the categories? Consistency, <laughs> accuracy, performance. Uh, so what we did, we, the, if there's one thing you all take from this deck, I think it's this one bullet. Engineering cannot by itself solve tech debt problems, most of it anyway. You have to find experts on both sides. And we, what we did, we said, okay, here you are the DRI for consistency, and here is your business partner. Go lock yourselves in a room, figure out what is it that we are trying to solve for and why. You both agree on the leverage for this item and come back with that. And we did this with every group and they came back with some effort estimates, some priority. So we gave them engineers and I think I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit here, but that's what the, the discovery work, measure twice, cut once, that is it. That is where you know, the, the magic sits. And with this, we were able to parallelize, and that's where the teams come in. We set pods. Consistency pod, don't muck with the accuracy pod. If you need more people, you come to me. We don't give each other help here. You focus on what you need to do. So the priorities can sit straight. And zone in, and together, engineering and product. And when they did that, this is where iteration planning became important. Once I have a set of high priority items, I can do iteration planning, and that's the holy grail of solving tech debt. In my opinion, don't try to boil the ocean. You cannot boil the ocean, and if you do, by the time you're done boiling the ocean, the world has moved on, and they don't need that anymore. So iteration planning, reassess, get in front of the customers fast, that's kind of where it all, and this is when the business gets excited. So if you cannot get your business partner's buy-in, go back and think about it again, because they should get excited. And effort estimates are important, so you can guess when will I see something out of this effort, uh, this initiative. And this is something that I often see. The metrics are not as tight and aligned when it's an engineering initiative versus a customer-facing one. Don't make that mistake have very tight metrics. There has to be a definition of done. We have to show progress. And this is where the business gives you the, you earn the right to go to iteration two. I see the value. If I go to my business partner and say, hey, you know what, you will be able to hire 5% less support uh, people because of this change, because the support tickets are gonna go down by this. I would be amazed if they said, no, I don't care about that. Very rare. Or if you go tell someone the churn, if you go tell the upsell people, if you go tell whoever, sales, logos, tell them why they should care, and then they will get, definitely get behind the effort. All right, lots of words. How did it go? 
I have six minutes. Okay, so with consistency, we deemed this was the most important part. The trust of the customer is, this is real money we're talking about here. So we really went hard on this one, put a lot of muscle behind it, and we came up with this universal cap table, which I'm very proud of, maybe the one legacy at Carta. Uh, that's same information no matter where you're coming from. You don't have to do your own calculations. So that obviously couldn't have happened without standardizing definitions. So that's consistency. Accuracy is our hardest issue, and that's because there is missing data over the years, and customers, we have to explain to them why it matters. If not today, tomorrow. When you have reports become important, and you don't have this missing, there's missing data, tax withholdings, you want to run a liquid, liquidity event. So that's kind of hard, because you can't do this on our own. But again, iteratively explaining education, that's kind of where, how we're going on accuracy. Performance has been a very good uh, step up for us as well. So many processes, when you have people zoned in, you would be amazed at how much engineers can come back with ideas when they have a business counterpart to get that whole domain-driven design, that whole DDD thing, and kind of come back with, this is what customers will care about. Um, and I think that's where the night and day difference we are seeing is processes we didn't need to run or things that used to take 24 hours because we wrote a query six years ago when companies we had were a whole different uh, segment and now there's a whole different segment. Um, so that all of that has been very helpful. It's still going. I don't think we'll be done in my lifetime, <laughs> but hey, I have kids, so they'll continue. <laughs> but the point here is, don't ever promise we will be done with tech debt at some point, because you will not be. Today, tech debt is being built that we don't even know about. Tomorrow, that, that is something we'll pay off, but that's okay, that is how it goes. So, last thing here is lessons learned. We didn't succeed in everything, obviously. There is a lot still to be done. But we did succeed in learning lessons. And the biggest one for me really is iteration planning. I have, I think at Carta, I have had this epiphany of how much buy-in you can get if your metrics are understandable by the whole company. If you go back and you do not just a show and tell on, hey, we're releasing this, but go back and say, hey, look, this is how many support tickets we used to have, those visuals, Looker's great, all the dashboards you can create and show them, it gets everyone excited and behind these efforts. Now, tech debt or business leverage? Actually, business leverage through tech debt. That's the thing I have learned, and that's what I keep coaching and mentoring my senior directors and directors is just make sure, if you cannot convince a business partner who's actually feeling the pain for reals from the customer, why they should care about it, Maybe it's not the time for the, the tech debt, or maybe the time's passed for that tech debt, or maybe you just need to sunset that feature and build a new one. It could be any one of those things. So do not ignore why your business people are not getting excited about fixing that problem. Now, question the status quo. I think there's always a reason for people to do something a certain way. You must understand that before you start go fixing it because the golden master has to exist, something, the baseline you have to, and you cannot do that until you know why something was done a certain way and what is it really doing. Metrics driven, I should have underlined that. I think this is where the buy-in comes from, this is where the confidence, the trust comes from. And engineers also, if you say, take two engineers and then just tell, tell them, hey, move this um, you know, thrift endpoint to gRPC endpoint and that's all you do and don't explain to them why or what, when are they done, what is the metric, they will lose momentum at some point. So this is good for everyone. I think this is the win-win for everyone, the metrics. And then lastly, it's never done, and that's okay. All right, that is all I had. I do have a minute if anyone has a question. <laughs> Anything? I don't know if you're doing questions. Okay, well, I must have been very clear. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>